What's going on guys? Tower number nine here and today we're going to be opening a two-player starter from Star Wars Unlimited Spark of Rebellion discussing what's in that product and whether you should pick one up if you're getting into the game. Let's get right to it. So as you can see here, two decks ready to play. Luke Skywalker versus Darth Vader and yeah we'll get right into it. So the back of the box here has a list of the um, has a list of the contents and so it basically has the deck lists for these uh, deck lists for these starter decks. Opening it up, we see we have some nice little deck boxes here. Um, so these are going to be, these are folding deck boxes. So they just, uh, you know, you just fold them up like that. And then there you have it. Kind of, you know, very, very basic, you know, just sort of a folding cardboard, folding cardboard sort of setup. Not the, uh, not the fanciest, uh, not the fanciest box, a little flimsy, you know. But uh, given what it is, which is just like a very basic box that uh, is going to be able to go in here, not too bad. We're going to have some tokens. So I think these are the same tokens that are in the various, uh, these are the same tokens that are going to be in the various pre-release kits and so on. So these are, you know, one damage, five damage, ten damage initiative token. And this one is to mark the epic actions that have been used on the leader of the base. I'm not going to punch these out right now. I already have a bunch of these punched out. But, you know, this is just, uh, you just push them through and you'll have your tokens. And then we have a second sheet of these. So this one is going to have a bit more of the damage and the epic action, but not the initiative. I think this is so that you have damage, uh, damage counters for both players, epic action counters for both players, and one initiative counter that you pass back and forth. So then... Continuing through here, we have the Spark of Rebellion Quick Start rules here. So this is just going to be a little rule book. Does not have the comprehensive rules, but it does have the, you know, here's the card anatomy. Here's how attacking works. You know, just a basic little rule book, uh, sufficient to show the basics of the game, as well as having this setup here that discusses how to use the two-player starter, uh, set up the basic the basic procedure for the game, and uh, get to playing. So. You know, just a uh, nice introductory book there. We also have, so this is a folding, uh, this is a folding mat. And this is not, um, so on one side we have a poster. Uh, the whole thing isn't visible here, but it's a poster of Darth Vader. And on the other side we have a play mat. And this is a kind of new guy oriented play mat. So, you know, this is not entirely visible, but it has, you know, very clear sections. You know, here's where your base goes. Here's where your leader goes. Here's the area for ground units. Uh, the sections are very clearly labeled. And in addition, uh, it has the setup, the round structure, the rules reference here for what keywords do and what triggered abilities do. So what this is, is a basic playmat that you can start out with that will not only be the area where you can uh, put down your cards, it will also have some nice reminders for how the uh, how the game itself is played. And I believe there is going to be a second one of these with the uh, with the Luke Skywalker art on the other side. So, yeah, once again, um, this is going to be basically the same deal as the first one, but with. Uh, this side being Luke Skywalker faithful friend. And so these are not made of just like, you know, whatever, like most basic flimsy paper. Uh, you can definitely use these as a play mat or spin them around like this and use them as a poster, which I think is a nice little thing. Nice little thing for them to include in the starter kits. And then perhaps the, uh, the meat the meat of the two-player starter. So that's everything that's in the box now that I've shaken out the decks. So these are the uh, the decks themselves. So there's one for Luke, one for Vader. They come in some kind of like almost like tissue-like paper here, wrapping uh, wrapping over them. And uh, yeah, let's uh, let's take a look. So we're opening this up. Uh, so Darth Vader, uh, Dark Lord of the Sith, this card is only available in this two-player starter product, or there is an alt art version of it that is available from the, uh, from the pre-release kit. I actually happen to have a Vader right here, so you can look at the difference. So the one on the left here is from the two-player starter, and the one on the right is from the pre-release kit. So it has a, the, the rules are exactly the same, but the 
pre-release kit version has a different piece of art and in addition the um the pre-release version is a foil card on this side only the only foil is on the leader side the unit side does not have foil so you can decide which of those art pieces you like better there is also a hyperspace version of this card and of luke that was a promo at gen con and other events but this version is from the pre-release kit and i'm going to set it aside because it does not come in the two-player starter so Continuing with our uh, other cards here, so we have the, uh, you know, the command center, and then they actually do provide you, so these are interesting, these are not found in normal packs either, what these are is, are uh, double-sided counters, so it's experience on one side and shield on the other, and what you'll find in normal packs is they will have bases that are like this, so this is a base from a normal pack, uh, it is a base on one side, and then on the other side you have the counter. And if you have a hyperspace base, then on the other side you have a hyperspace counter uh, for the common bases. And, and so these instead are shields on one side, experience on the others, and they're more designed to be used as counters. Uh, nice little helpful thing to have here. And then you might wonder what's on the other side of this base that comes in the starter. Well, instead of being a, another counter, it's actually a deck list that allows you to make sure that you have all the cards in the deck. Um, and as you can see here, it not only shows the cards, but it also shows the rarities of those cards. So C is common and found in boosters. S is starter and only found in the, in this starter product. U is uncommon in boosters and R is rare in boosters. These starters do have rare cards in them. So I believe the Vader has an Emperor Palpatine and a Relentless and the Luke has a Han Solo. And honestly, I forget what the other rare is, but we'll see it when we, uh, when we take a look at this card for Luke. So these go over here. And then looking at the cards themselves, you know, we have a fair few copies of some of these cards. You know, some have two or three. And then one nice thing is that they did include a full playset of three cards, uh, of three copies of the cards that are only available in this starter set. So here we have Admiral Mahdi. This is a starter set only card, and they do give you three copies. And the reason for that is uh, this way you do not ever have to buy multiple copies of this product in order to get cards that you need. If you buy one copy, you will have enough of the starter set only cards in order to make a constructed deck. Now I will say they do not have three copies of every card in this starter. So for instance, you only get one copy here of General Veers, I believe. Um, but you can get other copies of Veers from PAX and you do get three copies of Grand Moff Tarkin because he's another one of those starter set only cards. So a mix here of starter set only cards and cards available in packs. Do have a Palpatine and Relentless. These are rares. Three copies of Vader's lightsaber here. And, uh, you know, you move on and there's, here are some events. Here are some, uh, I Am Your Father is another starter set exclusive. So I Am Your Father once again with three copies. And this is a really nice improvement over the starter sets for some games, including some Fantasy Flight games that we've seen in the past. So if you're familiar with Fantasy Flight's LCG line, uh, some of the starters in those games, you needed to get two or even three copies to have uh, a full playset of certain cards. And they've really avoided that in this product by giving you enough copies to have a full playset of anything that is exclusive. So the question for this game is not how many copies of the starter you need, which it was in other games. So in Netrunner, for instance, you know, you could play with one core set. Uh, if you had two core sets, that was actually mu uh, much better for deck building, and you kind of needed to do that if you were playing competitively. And if you were really serious, you bought a third core set just for extra copies and for the third copy of a few cards that were only one per, uh, one per set. So now we're going to take a look at the Luke deck. Once again, there's Luke. Here's the Administrator's Tower with the deck list on the back side, and we can see the rares here are one copy of Obi-Wan and one of Han Solo. Uh, then again, we have the double-sided experience and shields, special counters there. And then here we have, you know, 2-1-D, R2-D2 is a starter set exclusive. And we're gonna set these off to the side because I have another thing to show you in a moment about that. And then, you know, here we go, a lot of different cards. And honestly, these are like quite interesting decks. You know, I would not play these 
If I were going to a competitive tournament, I wouldn't bring the starter. You know, I think there's definitely better decks you can build, but these like have rare cards. They have a nice balance. They have some cool cards in them. Uh, they have those exclusives, Luke's lightsaber, another exclusive. And overall, you know, these are, these are pretty solid. So I definitely think this is a pretty reasonable learn to play offering from Fantasy Flight Games. And additionally, I'll say that I think the, um, the way they've done it so that you would only need one copy of this starter uh, to build a, you know, to build a competitive deck that was using these uh, characters and you wanted to use some of those cards, I really applaud that. You know, I think it's something that has not been consistently the case in other games, uh, you know, including FFG's past games, also ones from other manufacturers. I know that in um, Flesh and Blood TCG, for instance, there was sort of an infamous case where the classic battles Reinar versus Dorinthia two-player starter had a 1x copy of Glistening Steelblade, which was a card that was extremely strong for Dorinthia and only available in that starter product. And at some point, the singles price of that one card got as high as like $30 and the whole product was worth $35 or whatever. I don't know if those numbers are exact, that might be wrong, but it created a odd situation where people were buying the starter just to get that one card. And FFG has really avoided that um, by having three copies of the relevant of the relevant cards from this starter so that if you just get one, you are good to go. You have a full playset for deck building. Now, I will say that there is another way to get some of these cards. So earlier I had a pack opening video where I showed uh, an organized play booster. Here's one of the cards in that booster. This is R2-D2. So R2-D2 is a starter exclusive, but this hyperspace R2-D2 is available in the organized play pack. So as you can see, same card roll-wise, but that little fancier treatment because all of these are going to be just standard uh, standard versions in the in the set. So they do give you the ability to get hyperspace versions in the organized play, weekly play promo boosters for this set. So it is possible that even if you wanted to use starter exclusive cards, you could collect those by getting a bunch of organized play boosters or by selling or trading with people who had them or who had starter sets themselves. So do you strictly need the starter set in order to play? No, you don't. Um, you can get those cards elsewhere and it is not necessary to have the two player starter. That being said, I think it's a solid product and you know, I'm personally happy that I got one. I think that not only does it give some, some uh, decks that are a nice starting point if you were to teach this game to a new player, but additionally, having those three copies of the starter exclusive cards will help you with deck building uh, if you're perhaps building a constructed deck later on. So personally, I do recommend this product and I think just getting one of these is very reasonable. You know, I pre-ordered one of these myself uh, before the set came out. And do you absolutely have to? No, you don't. If you want to, you could, uh, if, you're, if you're only concerned with competitive play and you don't care about having the teaching decks or having the mats or having the tokens or these deck boxes and stuff like that, you do not need this product. You could buy all the starter exclusive cards or trade for them. And I think they're probably gonna be available pretty cheaply. One other distinction is that I believe, I, so I don't have a copy immediately available to show of the normal version of this, but I believe the starter exclusive rares. So the starter exclusive rares like this Han Solo do not have the normal little reflective anti-counterfeiting thing that you'll see on rares that you'll get from a booster. So I will show you an example of that, though it is not actually going to be a Han Solo. Let me find a rare around here. I think I have one over here. But yeah, so this copy of Wedge Antilles, for instance, uh, this little uh, anti-counterfeiting thing that you'll see uh, on this card is not present on the starter set versions of those. I believe that does make the starter set versions of Han, Obi-Wan, Relentless, Palpatine a little bit less valuable on the secondary market. Um, although I don't know what the exact prices are. I did not look that up prior to making this video. So yeah, all things considered, I personally think this is a good product and I would recommend picking up one. Uh, do you have to? No, you don't. But uh, I think it's a, I think it's a good idea. I intend to actually keep these starter decks together as starter decks and use them in order to teach new players the game. And you know, if I have a friend who's interested in getting into the game, I can show them that with the starters. And additionally, if I need those cards for deck building, I'll have them here without having to do a bunch of secondary market transactions or trades or whatever in order to pick them up. But you know, if I were 
truly only interested in competitive play, I think it is probably not necessary to get the starter. You can get those cards elsewhere and be fine. So overall, I think this is a really good introductory product and it compares favorably to other starter products that I've seen from other games, including from FFG and other manufacturers, in that it does not require you to get a bunch of copies to have, uh, to have a bunch of copies of exclusive cards. It also provides, I think, you know, pretty good value with two decks, uh, a bunch of tokens, these playmats that are well suited for teaching, the little deck boxes, the rules. Overall, I think it's pretty strong. Now, one other thing that I'll note is that I believe that Fantasy Flight continues to intend to do these two-player starter products for future releases. So I think there has been a preview out there that showed that the starter set for set two is going to be Mandalorian versus Moff Gideon, and that should be an exciting pro uh, an exciting set to see as well. We'll have to see exactly how that ends up, but uh, given that I would say the Spark of Rebellion one seems pretty good, I think there's a, probably a good argument for picking up the one from the next set as well. Though... Um, you know, we'll have to see how it goes. I don't know what the exclusives are going to look like or whether they're still going to be available in organized play kits and so on. Um, I do think that it's possible that you might only want to have one starter set for the teaching decks and for others you might get the uh, get the cards otherwise once you already have some decks that you can use to, te to teach uh, newcomers. But honestly, another thing I'll say is depend on how many packs and stuff you're planning to open, it might be useful just to have these copies of like common cards. Some of these are like, you know, fairly staple cards in the right deck. Like were you going to pull three Death Star Stormtroopers from packs? Maybe you were going to open enough packs that you were, maybe you weren't though. And if you weren't, these uh, these starters are giving you a good foundation for deck building with just some uh, some solid basic stuff. All right, that's going to do it for this one, guys. Thanks to y'all for watching, and we will be back later with some more Star Wars Unlimited content. I will catch you guys later.